Hello, this is Bernie Wall and I want to talk a little in this IELTS video about how easy it is to get bands 7 and 8. As many of you know, um, I specialise in working with students who need bands 7 and 8 and that could be band 7 and 8 overall or often it's uh, students who need band 7 in everything and now more and more students who need band 8 in some of the parts as well. So I just wanted to give you a few pointers if you've been asked for band 7s or band 8s just so that you can ascertain whether that's going to be possible for you. So I want to first think about the statistics of the IELTS test. Um, the most common score at IELTS um, is usually six. So if you're looking for band seven and eight, you're already in a minority. So there are not that many students who get band seven and eight and even who are looking for band seven and eight. So more students are looking for band six and band 6.5. So that's already one hurdle that you need to um, address, which is you are in, a, I won't say an elite, it's not an elite, but it's a smaller group of students. Um, it's also interesting to note that if you are a woman, if you're female, you, you're, you have a slightly higher chance because uh, female students tend to get slightly higher than male students on both academic and uh, general training. But it's only a very small margin, so it's not going to uh, be a huge advantage, but it is a slight advantage. And um, I think that's because it is fairly well known that women tend to be better at language at school and university than men. Um, it's just one of those things. And finally, if you're living in an English speaking country, so in the UK, in Australia, Canada, the US, Singapore, any other countries where English is used widely, then if you are exposed to English a lot and you're using it in your daily life, then the chances of you getting a high band are also slightly elevated. So these differences are not massive, but they are slightly um, advantageous. So if you are female, living in an English speaking country, then you may have a slight advantage um, over some other students. If you are male, living in an English speaking country, then again, you have a slightly bigger advantage. So I've put together um, some slides showing some of the other things that you may need to take into account when considering this. And we'll have a look at some of these now um, and so basically if you're asked for band sevens in everything or a seven overall or band eights in everything or an eight overall you need as well as the st statistics I mentioned earlier from the uh, IELTS site you also need to factor in some of these things and that will tell you how likely you are to get the seven and eight uh, in a short period of time. Now, I think seven and eight is possible for everybody if they work at it. But for some people, it's going to take a considerable amount of time. For others, it may take uh, less time, depending on where you are um, when you start your preparation. So, I don't know if you know this idiom, how long is a piece of string? It's an answer that we give in English to a question that does not have a single answer. So how long is a piece of string? It's as long as you need it to be, or it's as long as you want it to be. And this is true of the IELTS. So how easy is it to get band seven and eight? It all depends on where you are, how good your English is, etc., etc. So we look at one or two things. The first is how good is your English? If your English is at band seven and eight level already, 
then with some work on the techniques, it shouldn't be too much of a difficulty to get band seven and eight. However, if your English is not close to this level, then it's going to take you a long time. So this is something you can tell from your previous IELTS exam. Or if you don't know this, ask your teacher or try a test. So if you're currently at band six, then it's going to be probably at least six months before you can get to band seven and eight. Um, unless you, I mean, things will accelerate it. If you're working with, uh, with a teacher, it will be faster. If you're on a course, it should be faster. If something went badly wrong in your last test, then it might be faster. Um, but if you're a long way away, it will take you a long time. If you're closer, then it will take you less time. It's just a matter of common sense. Are you looking for an overall score? Or are you looking for seven in each, for example? If you're looking for an overall score, then you have a better chance because you can balance your um, better skills against your weaker skills. So if your listening is high and your writing is a bit lower, then you can balance those against each other to get an overall score. If you need seven in each part, then obviously that's going to take more work. How much time do you have? If you only have an hour a week, it's going to take you longer. If you have an hour a day, it's going to take you less time. If you're on a full-time course, then it should take you less time. So balancing how much time, whether you're on a course, whether you're studying by yourself, how much support you have, all of that is relevant. And how committed are you? Is this something that you have to do, that you're determined to do? Because that will say how much effort you put into it. Um, or is it just something that you might like to do, in which case you may be less committed. So this does have an impact on um, how likely you are to get it. And how confident are you? Uh, confidence is a really important factor in taking an exam and in preparing well. So you need to think about that. Are you going to put everything you've got into getting this score? And that will help your confidence levels. Sometimes some students are overconfident and they believe that they can get seven, eight, and even nine, when in reality, their English language level is very far away from that. So it's important to be realistic as well as committed and confident. But the commitment to getting the score will drive you and the confidence will give you an edge when it comes to both your preparation and the exam itself. Okay, so how long is that piece of string for band seven and eight in IELTS? Okay, it's not easy to get band seven or it's even harder to get band eight. This much is true, but it's probably easier than you might think it is. So if you have all of those factors that I mentioned before regarding confidence, commitment, good language level, and a closeness to your score, then it's probably easier than you think. So with a little bit of uh, hard work and dedicated, consistent practice, then you should get there. So this is the key. So excellent preparation, a commitment to that preparation, perhaps some support in terms of a teacher or a course or other students who are doing the same thing, and the right mindset and determination. So with those things, then you should be able to achieve your level. I've written um, an article which gives rather more detail, and that can be found on my website, ieltslearningtips.com. So head over there. There's also more information there about uh, some of the courses that I run, and also a handful of resources that um, can help you with your IELTS preparation.
So I hope that if you take into account these factors, you will see how easy or difficult it's going to be for you to achieve those scores. Uh, and sit down, think about it. It's achievable for everybody, but it's just a matter of the time it's going to take you. So I hope some of that was helpful. As I say, head over to my website where you can find more help and advice. Uh, and I'll see you on the next video.